meeting to order for June 17th, 2020. It's just after one o'clock and we'll go into our roll call of members. Okay, um, Mr. Dalstead, Chair? Here. Uh, Soren Jensen, Labor Representative? Here. Mayor Boudreaux, Vice Chair? I'm here. Uh, Lori Gear? Here. Lisa Janicki? Here. Ron Wieson? Here. Julia Johnson? Here. Steve Sexton? Rick DeGloria? Here. Mark Holst? Okay, do you want me to go around the table here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Dale O'Brien, Skagit Transit. Arden Flores, Skagit Transit. Whitney Davis, Skagit Transit. Justin, you want to say your name? Okay, oh, great. Welcome. So we will start off with our public comment. And I see we have Joe Kensler on the line. Joe, did you have a public comment you'd like to share with us? Um, uh, uh, yes, I do. Um, I, I will be as brief as I can. Um, I want to stress the importance of having a discussion during the financial section uh, around having a potential ballot measure this fall. Um, we need to fully fund Skagit Transit. We do need a new MLA. We do need to have... Okay, I've got somebody with interrupting. I'm sorry. Um, but we do need to have money on hand to meet any potential federal grants um, to fund the building of the MLA. We need to fund building, um, you know, electrifying the scared transit fleet. We need to fund bus shelters. You know, all of those needs are, um, <clears throat> you know, still there. It, and it's just really, really important that we have the right financial model and that we we do discuss having a ballot measure to make sure that the money is on hand to be ready for any stimulus funds. Um, we also need to better connect Cedar Woodway to the park and ride in um, in both Chepinet and um, and Mount Vernon. You know, to connect to the county connectors better. You know, those are all needs. They've all been long standing. So I'm just going to ask again that the board please discuss having a ballot measure. This was a recommendation of the community advisory committee several months ago. And with that, I yield the balance of my time. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Joe. Is there anyone else uh, on that would like to give a public comment? Okay, hearing none, we are going to move into our consent and action items, which is our previous meeting minutes and our claims and payroll uh, A and B. If there's no questions, then move uh, adoption of the consent agenda items A and B. I'll, se I'll second it, Mayor Julia Johnson. Okay, so moved by Mayor Boudreau, seconded by Mayor Johnson to approve the consent action items A and B. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any, oppo any opposed? Okay, the motion carries unanimously. Now we're going to move into our monthly budget update reports. Arden? Um, uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So the monthly budget reports are presented for your review. Some of the items of interest are Skagit Transit received $866,789 in sales tax revenue for the month of May 2020. This is 23% lower than the $1,125,594 collected in May of 2019. Total sales taxes collected so far for 2020 are $4,880,245 which is 5.15% lower than the 5,145,345 collected during the first five months of 2019. We also received 5,7492 in federal grant reimbursements this month, which includes 2,392,639 from the Federal CARES Act. For expenses, our fuels are well within budget all other expenses were as expected. 
Our reserve account balances are as of as of May 2020th, we had a total of 1,916,615 as compared to 6,201,835 as of May 2019. And uh, just a note here, the, uh, this, these figures as, uh, are, were as of May 2020th. Again, the, the grant reimbursements have been received and we put that back in our reserve. So as of June 2015, 2020, our reserve account balances are $5,416,615. And staff recommends the board approve the monthly budget reports. Yeah, are there questions? Any questions for our? This is uh, Lisa. Can I ask a question? Sure, sure, Mr. Absolutely. Um, so if I recall collect, collect, uh, correctly, the CARES Act money expected and was going to be almost $7 million, of correct. which 2.4 has been received. Is that correct? That's correct. And our, the CARES Act money that the county gets has, um, you know, expiration dates like a carton of milk. If I don't spend it by October 31st, I don't get it. Yes. So is, are there expiration dates to the spending of the $7 million CARES fund money that's coming into Skagit Transit? No, 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 Mayor, there was none. There's a, the directions that we got came through the FTA. The way we received our CARES Act was it was funneled through the FTA, and it basically, just to sum it up, it, it, uh, it, it, we have a $1.7 million operating grant that we receive each year. And basically, to simplify it, it just tacked on to that amount. It made that amount from 1.7 to another 7 million. So basically, it gave us almost a $9 million operating grant and no expiration. Actually, you know what, maybe I should clarify that. No expiration in the long term that we were out planning for, but I can, I can confirm but uh, anyway, our plan for this is to be able to recoup this entire amount before year end. We have to accumulate expenditures to back it up to, for the reimbursement, but that, that's our plan. So as, as of before October or before the end of the year, we expect to be able to get that entire $7 million. Okay, you know, it came up, it came up, Artemis, when you did that calculation that shows a carry forward to next year. Right, right. And um, I just wanted to make sure that, that those funds don't expire somehow. But you're saying you'll have adequate expense to show against yes. the CARES Act money if there, are, if there are spending restrictions in current year. Yes. And then, yeah, yeah, that's our plan. And if there is carry, if, if there is carryover money, we can carry it over. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But see, the that's a flexibility that the transit authority is giving. Um, you know, those funds that we're not seeing in um, the other federal funds. And well, we all know federal funds have so many strings attached. I just want to make sure we know um, which strings there are in place. <clears throat> Yes, uh, and yeah, we are, we're really paying attention. And then I guess the other part of it, as, as everybody can hopefully see this, the, the other part of the, the monthly budget update is the, uh, the spreadsheet that I included. Uh, I think this is coming from uh, the board wanted a, some kind of a, a financial report in regards to how we're being affected by the, by the pandemic so far. So um, I included the spreadsheet in there. And the, um, I guess I would, do you want me to start uh, sure. going through the spreadsheet? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so. Um, so I guess maybe a good point, starting point for this spreadsheet would be the, the, the tab in yellow. So we, at the beginning of the year, we budgeted $12,748,147 in, in sales taxes. This is our primary revenue stream. More than 80% of our budget comes, you know, we expect this to be able to pay for our budget. So obviously we're not going to get all of this. Uh, as of now, our base, our most current projection is uh, we're going to be short by about $3.6 million in, in sales taxes and from our other, our other operating revenue streams is we'll, we'll be short by about $4,140,639. Uh, gra our grants are 
Uh, our other grants that I not, did not include it in here are, you know, they're, they're, uh, we're not concerned about any of them. So I didn't put that in, in, uh, in here anymore. So again, the, and as you can see, our, our projections so far in the sales taxes column starting from June, we're projecting, we're projecting to get 40% in June and then a slow but steady recovery all the way to December. And so again, from a comparison of how much we think we'll be short by, uh, by our projections, we'll be short by $4.1 million. And I compare this to the amount of federal stimulus of all, over $7 million, which will you know, we'll recoup before year end. And so if this, if this holds, we'll be carrying over about $2.8 million for next year. Uh, just again, this is based on just a one-to-one -one comparison between our major revenues and then the federal stimulus. Uh, I think the, we'll, ha we'll have a more detailed accounting for you next month when we, when we present our major budget amendments. Any other questions about that? Does that make sense? Yeah, I like the I like the presentation. So the <clears throat> the assumption of coming in at seventy two percent for the year for sales tax, the inverse of that is twenty eight percent. So you're so we are budgeting a a twenty eight percent reduction in sales tax, which is Mayor Sexton I think was was um, estimating thirty percent reduction. I I just hope you're both wrong, but um, <laughs> it's good to see the um, you know what that projection looks like if it does come in there. Do we have any other questions regarding the budget update? This is Jill. So thank you, Arden, for laying it out. I thought it was it was very easy to sort of walk through the logic of how you did this. So thank you very much for that. I think my only comment is I wish cities were funded by the FDA too. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Mayor. Yeah. I second that. Is there a motion to approve the monthly budget report? This is Commissioner Janet Key Knight. Move to approve the monthly budget report. Mrs. Mayor Gear, I second that. We move by Mr. Janicki, seconded by Mayor Gear, to approve the budget report as presented. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion carries unanimously. So, reinstating the fares, Dale. Okay. Staff is asking the Board of Directors to approve the reinstatement of fares on fixed route retroactive to June 1, 2020. Fares were suspended in March due to the coronavirus outbreak. Staff recommends that the Board approve reinstating the fixed route fares retroactive to June 1. At this time, we do not know what the revenue impact is going to be, but I will say that ridership is down over 76%. So it, but the collection affairs has helped a lot in some of the situations we've had. Questions or comments? Okay. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the reinstatement of the fixed route fares retroactive to June 1st? This is Jill. I make guys so move. Want to Moved by Mayor Boudreaux, seconded by Commissioner Wieson to approve the reinstatement of the fixed route fares. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Community Advisory Committee report. Uh, the CAC, uh, The CAC held a video conference meeting on June 9th. The vote was taken at the reg for the regular summer break for the months of July and August. The CAC expressed ex appreciation for the uh, efforts by staff to keep the buses clean and on time. They additionally expressed support for the re-implementation of fixed route fares and are concerned about the financial health of the, the agency. Um, but we have, we have shared with them what, what Arden has shared with the board of directors, so I, I think that concern is, has been um, 
calm down a bit, I should say. Okay, how about your executive report? Well, uh, we have been working with uh, the Guamus Island Ferry in hopes of putting together a pilot program for an interlocal agreement that they would be able to utilize our Cubic, which is our touch pass ferry system. We've had several meetings with the Guamus Island Ferry uh, manager and the vendor, and it appears that we would most likely be able to put this together for a 90-day pilot program. The residents on, on Guamus Island would really love to see a cashless system where they could just pull up to the ramp, touch the card to a reader, and go on the boat. So we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, Mayor Boudreau, I'd like to say thank you to the Malvern and Police Department. I've met with the Chief and Lieutenant Moore. Uh, we have come to just a partnership that Malvern and PD will be able to come in and utilize the cameras and the office at Skagit Station and the restrooms. They'll have access 24-7. We're putting in a keypad so they can get in the doors and it, it's just, it's going very well and I think it's going to be just a great partnership for both of us. It allows the officers on the south end of town to have a, have a break, get out of the patrol car. The other thing I have to say is I just want to show my appreciation for our entire staff through all of this. Um, our drivers, it was flawless when we went to collect an affair. Everybody's wearing a mask and the PPEs are being adhered to. There's an awful lot of, um, I shouldn't say an awful lot, but there are other transit agencies throughout the state are putting barriers next to the drivers so that the driver is basically boxed in the seat. That's something that we have met with um, our, our drivers and they're not really fond of the ideas, not to mention it's very expensive and we don't know how long they'd be required. So we're saving some money by not doing that. We're also getting the support of the drivers to wear their PPEs and uh, collect the fare and still to this day there has been no positive test at this agency. So everybody's doing their part. Great. Any questions for Dale? Yeah, I, this is Commissioner Janicki. I do have a question. Um, uh, Dale, as um, Joe has mentioned in um, public comment, you know, more than once that there's a, um, a there's a connector, there's the connection between Cedro Woolley and the park and ride. Uh, it, is that is that a gap that does need to be corrected? Is that what's the issue and 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 is there a fix? And then if you could talk about just general route changes, I know ridership is down by what did you say before ninety percent or something? Seventy six point five percent. Yeah. Yeah. Are there other are there other route reductions that you're considering at this time? At, at this time, we don't have any plans to do any further route reductions. We are uh, planning to continue with our lower level of service through July to kind of see what if we do get into phase three and what that looks like. Uh, to address the route from Cedar Woolley to Mount Vernon, yes it is, it's a priority. It, it takes way too long for residents of Cedar Woolley to get into the main service area. Our plan would be to um, do a direct route from the Cedar Willie Park and Ride to Chuckanut and then on to Skagit Station. So when this agency is able to increase service, that is a priority route that we will do. There's also a route that we are formulating in concrete. It's a flex route. It allows, with, with the um, agreement with the, the drivers, it allows the driver in concrete to do both fixed route and paratransit work, so we're not sending paratransit vehicles all the way to concrete for one or two rides. That will hopefully go into effect in September. So our target would be to utilize that what we call the flex route and the sea jewelry route in September. We have increased two runs on the 90X going to Everett with the bump in, in gas. We're getting a better ridership on the commuter routes. 
But other than that, we foresee the rest of our service to remain the same at least through July. But the two priorities are, as I mentioned, concrete and cedar wood. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Dale? So, sir, and I just want to say thank you, and hopefully you will pass that on to all of our drivers, so the commitment that they've shown and uh, the service levels going through this time. I'm sure it's been challenging for them, and, but it's a team effort. When we all work together, we all do better for, as a community, so if you'll pass that on for us. I appreciate that, and I will certainly do that. Thank you. Okay, does anyone else have any other questions or comments? Uh, Dale, no unfinished or new business? Well, the only unfinished business is our, our MOA, but I, I think that's a conversation that we should have at a later date. There's really um, nothing new to go out and try to get bids right now in today's environment. It's just not the right thing for this agency to do. And we're still collecting over $11,000 a month in in rent from legends so um we're, we're doing pretty well up there it, it doesn't need to go anywhere until we can afford to do it okay great with that then we're going to be adjourning and we will be meeting back again on our go to meeting for the transportation policy board at 1 30. we stand adjourned it's 1 25.